you guys that are watching us right now got to know from the beginning as we were talking about the history from the Brigadier General uh, Rivanga. So hopefully you really uh, understood and then the advice that he had uh, for uh, the other nations that should be learning from our uh, history, from what we have gone through, uh, to now where we are and the rebirth and rebuilding and the reconstruction that we have had as a nation. So today I'm joined by Rulinda Corbert, the Executive Director of Rwanda We Want. We have had him before uh, throughout the conversation that we normally have with different youth who are actually uh, doing amazing in the uh, in the in Rwanda who have recently contributed a lot to where we are right now. Uh, Rulinda, thank you very much for uh, being with us today. Thank you so much, Christian. Thank you so much for having me today. Yes, we are glad to have you. But when, of course, we have had this conversation before and uh, mm. getting to know more about uh, what uh, Rwanda We Want is all about and what you guys, uh, what your contribution to the uh, Rwanda rebuilding itself to where we are right now. So we'd love to get out to take you back to uh, the uh, formation and the foundation of Rwanda We Want. Please tell us a little bit about uh, where does it uh, have to meet with the vision of Rwanda and what you guys are doing as Rwanda We Want and how are you, you know, putting everything together to the vision of Rwanda that we have. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Christian. Happy Liberation Day to all of us. <laughs> By the way, I should have said it before. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, um, thank you so much. So, Rwanda We Want uh, is, first of all, a youth-led organization mm. yeah. uh, which specifically works with the youth. Yes. And specifically the youth that were born after the genocide against the Tutsi. Mm. Uh, Ranont started in 2015. Mm. Uh, our founder and all of us were actually in high school. Uh, we're even younger than today. We're uh, around 17, 18. Mm. Uh, so the reason behind starting Rwanda we want was to reflect on our role as active contributors mm. uh, to, our, to the development of the country. Uh, because we were uh, told that we are the leaders of tomorrow, Mm -hmm. uh, but we reflected and we realized that if we want to be good leaders of tomorrow, we have to start today mm -hmm. and we have to start um, uh, reflecting on what can we do, uh, first of all, to sustain what has been achieved, mm -hmm. but also to contribute to uh, the development of the country in general. Uh, so coincidentally, in 2015, there was um, a meeting that was setting uh, the vision of African countries of 2063, of the Africa we want. Mm -hmm. uh, and that that time we were just reflecting on what are we contributing to the Africa we want. So we mm -hmm. said, let's start with the Rwanda that we want. Yeah. Uh, and we know that the youth has um, uh, a powerful, uh, as they say, uh, the youth are mm -hmm. So we know that we have a lot to do to make sure that we have, uh, we can achieve the Rwanda that we want. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, the Rwanda started that way. It started as a small club in high school mm -hmm. but after we finished we had an idea of expanding our activities and registering it as an engagement organization and what we we're doing at the time uh, we we're just discussing between ourselves uh, mm -hmm. it's a small space and we started by discussing uh, the matters that we could see that are affecting the youth in Rwanda mm -hmm. uh, what are the challenges that we are, we are facing uh, because we knew the challenges the issues that are hindering the youth will hinder the development of the country mm -hmm. in general and we we are at the right path of becoming good leaders, as they mm -hmm. say. Definitely. Yes, definitely. As you mentioned, that you start, you guys started, or when the club started, you were young, you were in high school, but also. Um, I believe that for the most part, especially for the youngsters, even though it has started to change right now, we have seen the changes throughout uh, young people in being involved in politics. And as we hear Rwanda, we want is self-explanatory. I believe that for you guys to do anything about the Rwanda we want, you also have to know about politics yes. and its development and whatever it contributes to the country. How did you, where did you guys get the strength to actually be like, yeah, I'm young, and even though the other people that my age don't understand me knowing about politics, where did that strength come from as youngsters? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yes, when we started actually Run the uh, anyone that we're talking to, uh, they'd be like, ah, that's politics, so what are you doing? Medium mm. uh, politics. And because, yeah, they said, Run the want, what is the Rwanda that you want that you don't have today? Mm. So, yeah, it looked like it was politics, yeah. and politics comes with such a negative uh, aspect to it. Mm. But um, I would say the strength uh, came from. Uh, from our parents, and by parents I mean the older generation, mm. uh, 
because uh, the government in general uh, and our elders have taught us to take responsibility at a very young age. Mm -hmm. And the strength also came uh, from the fact that we knew that the youth in our age were the ones that contributed in liberating the country, that's one. But we also unfortunately knew that the youth in our age were the ones that uh, con contributed to the genocide against the Tutsi actively. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we knew that uh, with the youth, we must take action and positive action to, so to make sure that what happened will never happen again. Uh, so history shows that if we just sit down, uh, we, will, we might also contribute negatively. Mm -hmm. So we needed to start reflecting on what we can do to make sure that what happened can never happen again and to make sure that we'll have a prosperous country. So mm -hmm. I will say that's the strength that we had. But we also learned from our elders and they were uh, very keen on teaching us on taking responsibilities mm -hmm. from a very, very young age. Personally, I would love to uh, uh, hear from you. 30 years now, uh, the liberation as we're talking about, we are celebrating the liberation day. Uh, for you, what does that mean to you as a Rwandan? Uh, really uh, taking a look on the, where Rwanda has really come from, what uh, Rwandans RPF have done to rebuild this country. Uh, we're talking about, uh, before you come, we talk about the health sector, the growth of the health sector, the mm. infrastructure. We have so many good things that are happening in Rwanda. The rebuilding of the nation itself is so amazing. So many uh, good things that have happened. For you personally, as Rwandan, uh, when you take a look, because uh, you're really involved, you know what is happening, uh, you are taking also, you are making this huge step in developing our country. Mm. For you, what does that mean uh, as you used to see all of the good, amazing things that are happening to Rwanda, that is mm. happening in Rwanda? Thank you so much. That's a good question. So the thing is, I believe liberation is a journey. Mm. Uh, it's not, I believe it started in 1990, but uh, I believe it did not just end with stopping the genocide in 1994 mm -hmm. because there were a lot to be done, as you just said, mm -hmm. uh, build, rebuilding the country in different sectors of the country. That was a journey. Uh, and after 30 years, I think we, they did a good job. So today, personally to me, uh, 30 actually reminds me that as the youth that were born after the struggle, uh, we need to start looking at ourselves as contributors, not beneficiaries. Not, we are not beneficiaries anymore. Uh, we need um, to start uh, reflecting on how we will carry the legacy of our liberators. Uh, because again, you said we have a lot of things that we have achieved in the past 30 years. And at this point, uh, we are being passed the baton uh, on what are we going to do in the next 30 or even more years. So uh, to me, uh, this day actually reminds me that, first of all, as the youth, uh, we need to be contributors, but we also, uh, to do that, um, we will have to learn from some of um, the values of uh, our fellow youth that liberated the country. And we will need to be uh, present, we need to be active, uh, we need to be goal-oriented, we need to be disciplined, uh, we will need to be accountable, uh, we will need to be selfless, and most importantly, we will need to work twice as hard to make sure that we achieve the Rwanda that we want and to make sure that we also achieve other different visions that were set by our parents and our liberators uh, in the past uh, decades. Yes, definitely. And as we talk about liberation, obviously, um, how is it contributing especially to Rwanda we want even though it was established years after in 2015 mm -hmm. but like you said we're still you know liberating and just over and over um, developing the country how did it how does it correlate like how well uh, all of our work at yeah. Rwanda we want um, as I said of course we look at the challenges that the youth are facing today but most of our work today are in promoting unity and resilience in Rwanda and empowering the youth. So the liberation journey, uh, we started Rwanda mainly because of the liberation that, we, that started in 1994. Because we started Rwanda, I want um, to, 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 to reflect on how uh, we can keep uh, what we have achieved, as I said, and for example, we need uh, to, 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 to keep the unity in Rwanda that we have today. Uh, we need um, to face different issues that the youth are facing today. We need to develop 
different skills among our fellow youth uh, to make sure that we are leaders of tomorrow. Uh, so basically, uh, the liberation actually contributed to the funding of Rwanda we want because uh, we wanted to make sure that what has been achieved uh, will be sustained, but we can also have our contribution and our role to that. Uh, what do you envision Rwanda to be? Because right now you said uh, they're passing the bottom. They're definitely doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, our elders that helped to uh, revert this country. So what do you think should be done uh, for youth to step up, really? Because we talk about uh, the youth involvement into politics and how we we know what is happening. Some really know what is happening. They're really doing their uh, part. Like uh, some youth-led organization like Rwanda We Want and so many others are really, uh, really taken a huge step in really uh, providing uh, resources needed to the young people to really get to know uh, about what is happening to Rwanda, the politics. What should be done uh, in your uh, personal views for youth to step it up more uh, uh, efforts to be put in? Because uh, as the Rwanda want is not the only one. We need more youth-led organization to really uh, contribute to the development of our, our country. So what do you think should be done for youth to step up? Well, a lot has been already done because yes. uh, I think the youth have been put at the forefront uh, of this journey, of this battle by our great government. And I say that because uh, we have different initiatives such as Rwanda We Want, different initiatives such as our Pass, PAP, and other different initiatives led by the youth and all with uh, a shared vision uh, of having uh, a developed and prosperous country. So I think a lot have been already done uh, that was led by the government, but I also believe that we also have uh, a role to play uh, as the youth today. Uh, I think we need to, to engage more. I think we need to have more of our participation in different aspects of the country. Uh, we've been to talking about politics, uh, you know. Uh, when we say politics, the youth, we say that's politics. You're not going to be as they say. Now I'm going to leave Angamon. And you know, but politics is the way of living, is the way of life. Politics involves governance, it involves education, it, inv it involves representation, it inv involves decision making, it involves all the sectors and all the daily life of, of, of a citizen. Uh, for example, we are heading in the election uh, processes of uh, the presidential election and the uh, parliamentary election, if I say that correctly. Uh, we need to actively participate in that. Mm. And the reason I say that is because um, the youth, we might think that um, maybe that's, that, that's, that doesn't concern me. Mm. Uh, I will give you an example. In 2017, I first voted for, 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 for the presidential uh, candidate. Mm. But I think in 2018 or 19, if I'm not wrong, the, the election for the members of the parliament. Mm. And at that time, I was young and I said, that, that doesn't concern me. Mm. So you understand that the youth, we need to understand that this is very, very important because mainly of two reasons. Mm. Uh, we all know that the youth in Rwanda are constitute of 60, more than 65% of the country population. Yes. That's a very, very big uh, and large number to not have their say, to not have uh, their voices heard mm. uh, in such processes, such democratic processes in the country. But also number two, we need to understand that the people that we are actually voting for, uh, both the presidential and members of the parliament, they are the same people that will be making policies in the next five or ten years, policies that will be actively affecting us, uh, either positively or negatively. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that uh, we had our inputs in actually deciding who will uh, be our leaders of, of tomorrow. So I think um, what we need to do uh, today and what is Rano doing actually in this past month, uh, we have been trying to uh, engage in uh, in youth engagement. We, we've been creating youth in, uh, civic engagement workshops mm. uh, because we wanted uh, the youth uh, to, to, to have adequate knowledge and information of the importance of engaging in different democratic processes of the country mm. uh, today. For example, we have the election process, but we also have other aspects that the youth need to actively uh, engage uh, because it creates uh, a sense of ownership, it creates a sense of uh, responsibility, and as I said, uh, in the next five or even ten years, we will be the decision makers. So we need to make sure that 
uh, the people that we are voting today, for example, will pass, uh, will give a good path for us. Mm -hmm. So I think we, the youth just need uh, to be engaged more uh, in all different aspects of the country and not just think that it's, it's, it's politics. Do you yes, think the youth are ready? Sorry. Do you think the I think we are ready. I think <laughs> we are ready. But to be fair, these like elections period campaigns, mm. they have been putting exactly. in effort. Exactly. I think, uh, I think we are ready. I'm not trying to be naive, <laughs> but I think we are ready. Candidates? Sorry? Why are you not into the parliamentary oh, candidates? Oh, like, it's it's not yet my thing. <laughs> but we've had uh, yes. the same people, the same age uh, with me, mm. 25, 26, that have been presented with their candidacy for, for right. the members of the parliament. Yeah. We saw them. Mm. And I've been seeing them uh, actually um, doing uh, the, 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 the campaign of their own. Mm. So maybe I'm not personally uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> presenting myself, but mm. I've seen people yeah. in the same age, which, saw that, which shows that the youth are aware that uh, we are being passed the baton yes. and the youth are ready. We still have a long way to go, of course, but we have good signs and good initiatives. Definitely. Yes, like you just mentioned, we really saw how the youth have been at the forefront, especially mm -hmm. in the elections campaigns. Mm -hmm. People have been, you know, advocating for mm -hmm. their, you know, candidates that they mm -hmm. want. And that's beautiful. And that honestly shows that the journey is going well and it is because of the organizations like Wanda, we want to be honest, because you guys raise awareness about these things and also talking about the liberation as we are celebrating today, it's mostly about the journey, like I just said. Mm -hmm. What um, would you say is the journey of Rwanda we want, where you came from and where you are now, something to be happy about? Take some successful stories. That I you bet there's a lot because, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, wow. the <laughs> um, so first of all, when we started actually Rwanda we want, uh, mm -hmm. let me just talk about the numbers because that's the first thing mm -hmm. we started. Uh, we're a small, small number. We're not even uh, more than 10 uh, mm. students at the time. And when we finished high school, uh, we went to work in, in other uh, schools, different mm. schools of the country in different districts of the country, yeah. because we believe that our vision uh, should be shared with other fellow youth. Yeah. Uh, today, almost eight, nine years after that, uh, we've been able to reach more than 8,000 youth in Rwanda, in more than mm. eight and nine districts of the country. Mm. Uh, and we've been able uh, to tackle different issues, different challenges that the youth are facing. Uh, we've built programs uh, to talk about, to raise awareness about the transmission of trauma mm. among the post genocide youth. It was mm. one of the things that we're seeing uh, in our fellow youth. We're seeing signs of trauma, signs of guilt in the youth that did not see the genocide, actually. Mm. So we, ra we started raising awareness about the transmission of trauma. Mm. Uh, we started creating um, spaces for the youth to discuss about our history with their parents, because mm. one of the issues that we also saw in our fellow youth uh, is that we could not talk about this, the genocide against Tutsi with our parents because mm. of different uh, traumatic uh, past experience that they are facing and that mm. we are facing today. Uh, so we are able to create what uh, a protocol uh, that we worked with with our partners interface called uh, multi-family healing spaces where we mm. could bring different families uh, to discuss different issues in their community and the history of the country in general. And we actually have great stories of the youth that were able to uh, first of all talk up with their parents about what happened in the genocide, yes. uh, genocide survivors, the genocide perpetrators, mm -hmm. and they told us that was um, uh, their start to their healing journey. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, talking to that that extent with their parents, it liberated them. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that's one of the stories that we received. But again, uh, we have other different programs that we we, we conducted. Uh, for example, you know, one of the main issues that we have in Rwanda is the high percentage of teenage pregnancies in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. We've had different programs uh, that worked with the youth to give them adequate knowledge, information and services regarding sexual reproductive health. But we also have uh, programs to help uh, the economic development of teenage mothers in Rwanda, mm -hmm. uh, where we teach them different employable skills, uh, mm -hmm. such as uh, tailoring, uh, sewing, uh, hairdressing and we provide them with toolkits and capital uh, to start their own business. So in summary, 
those are the small um, activities that we've been conducting in the past eight years. Mm. And I'm happy to say that uh, when we started eight years ago, uh, we had a great vision, but uh, we are at a very, very good path today. Mm. Mm. Uh, we have achieved more than we thought we could achieve, mm. uh, but we still have a long way to go. Yeah. Uh, we need to reach more youth in Rwanda. Mm. Uh, we need to reach more districts and areas of the country, but most importantly, we need uh, to create more programs that are tailored to the needs of the youth Definitely. and to make sure that uh, we have inductive programs. Definitely. Yes. You called it small, but that's not <laughs> that's small at fast. all. Uh, right. We are glad uh, that you guys have been really working and uh, definitely that is uh, good things that happened. So mm. thank you very much, Rudinda Kobel, the Executive Director of Rwanda We Want. We are yes. glad to have this conversation with you. And please, next time we'll definitely have you because uh, you share so much. Guests. Yes, thank you so <laughs> much. You share so much <laughs> wise uh, ideas and we are glad to always uh, have you in the morning. Yeah. Thank you yes, so much definitely. for having me and uh, let's have a good uh, Day. Yes, same to you as well. So uh, that uh, wraps up our interview today and we are glad uh, that you guys really enjoyed this whole uh, interview. So as we move on to the next part of our show, uh, we have different guests that are coming today. I'm going to be hosting, as we said, from various sectors. So uh, let's take a short break and we'll be right back with more. <laughs>